Welcome back. We are now on part two of vamping up my file facts. I'm going to be working on the cover of the file facts and what I have, and again in another video I've used these before. My mother, every year I would buy her a Marjolein Bast Bastion um, day planner for, for uh, Christmas. And after a couple of years, I went over um, last year and she said, what am I going to do with all these? They're all in my cupboard. They're... I, she was saving a couple of the photos, so I, she gave them to me. And I have all these pages, and I've used them for creating some other journals as well. Uh, but these are all her planner pages that I've used. And I'm thinking I'm going to try and select something from one of these uh, for my cover. Because they're... <laughs> I have a lot, as you can see. So what I was doing was I was flipping through and some of, I picked out some of my favorites. And again, I'm gonna use this, it's called Peel and Stick Adhesive Sheets. And I had this in my closet, but I, it's for um, like a photo scrapbooking. But I think I got this at a thrift store in, in a little package with a whole bunch of other stuff. And this is double-sided. So what you do is you, you pick up your page. So these are some of the pages I was looking at using. So there's this one. Um, this is one of my favorites. This is actually on one of her larger calendars. This picture kind of goes like that. So that would be nice on the front and back of a book. And again, this was my mom's planner pages. <laughs> so it has some writing on the back. But I have some really beautiful pages that I wanted to choose from. And these are just a couple that I pulled out that I thought would be really nice. For the covers um, and then I've set aside some Christmassy ones that I'm going to use maybe for a Christmas project. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? <laughs> that one's really nice too. Anyway these are Christmas ones. I'll set those aside. So what I did was I peeled off the the one side of the peel and stick and I think there was three or four sheets in here. So I've just peeled off the one side and it's very sticky. So when I peel that off and then I stuck the book page on top of it. So say I use this one and then I stuck it on top and then I started cutting out around. So I decided I might use this one. So I've added it to the backing paper and I've trimmed around what I want to sh show. And then this little guy will go on the front of the book like that. But I think I'm gonna add something behind it because it looks a little plain. So I might use one of the, the file folder. So I'm not sure yet. Maybe add some material to that. And then that will go, I'll trim it down. And that will go on there. And I'll trim this down, say to about there. And that will go in the front, but I'm thinking I might add some muslin or something behind that. So I'm going to work on that, but that's what I've kind of decided to work with um, on the cover or this one. I haven't really chosen. But the other thing I was working on was I took another one of those file uh, folders that I'd cut originally, what I was going to use, and I've added one of the, the pictures from the, the um, ex extras and I've distressed it and I've taken one of those bucket lists and I've added it to the back and then I've added a piece a strip of the remainder of the file folder and I just added the little zazz to that so that will go at the back and that will be for uh, maybe something extra uh, extra pages that I want to stash in the back so that goes in there and then I also added the strip of Let's open this up. This is my calendar that I kept from before and I've just added a piece of the file folder to the front and the back there to make it a little sturdier so it wouldn't rip again. So that is in there as well. Now what I'm thinking of making, I have a piece of this file folder and I'm thinking of making, see how it already has part of the tab there? I'm thinking of making something that is long and thin as like a bookmark. So I'm thinking I'm going to go maybe, oops, got my, maybe three inches wide 
and I'm going to cut this down to three inches wide and I think I'm just going to leave it the length it is and then I'll use my template and punch the holes and I'm going to decorate this as some kind of so I know what month I'm in or what project I'm working in I'll have a little tab at the top so let me go ahead and cut this down to the three inches and cut it off there my cutter is over out of camera so I'm just going to Cut that and cut it to three inches. And there. There, so I cut that down. And then under this piles and piles of stuff. <laughs> so again, I've got lots of these planner pages that I want to use up for different little projects. And some of the photos are just beautiful. There's a lot of animal pictures in there, and I don't do a lot of animal pictures, so I might uh, make a little bundle and see if anybody wants to buy the pages from me. All right, so let's get all this stuff out of the way. I'm looking for my... my here it is. <laughs> I've got so much stuff on my desk. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and cut the other side of the tab for this. And I'm going to redo this one just to give it that same cut. There. Not perfect. I'll just trim it back a little bit. I was using the scissors with the adhesive and they're really sticky. I'll have to clean those off. So now I'm going to punch my three holes in here and this will actually, actually I see I can trim it down a little bit so it doesn't stick right up. So let's trim it down to about the, the eight and a quarter height with the tab. Okay, so that's the same size as that. And then I'm going to distress the edges. And I'm going to pick maybe something from my planner pages that I can put on here. Maybe a nice quote so that when I'm working on a project it'll keep me inspired to keep going on the back. So let's quickly distress this and we'll punch the holes in it. And then I might make a little tab, um, some words here saying working on, and that will go on the top, and then that will fit in there like that. So let's cut some, let's punch some holes in this. I'll use this template because I have it right here. So it has to be from the bottom. And I'll draw my circles. And I'm going to punch this, the holes out now. And then when I cover it, I'll have the holes and I can just flip it over and punch the holes out again. So let's just go ahead and punch these holes. All right, so that will go in there, like that, perfect. Okay, so let's find something that we can use to decorate this one. And I say, I do have, oops, sticky, leave that one there. I did have some of these picked out. But I have so many to go through that Hmm, I really like this one. I don't want to use up the blue one. That's for another book. So I might trim this one down and have the butterfly and that, or I could do it right from the chair. And I would lose the butterfly a bit. Anyway, I'm going to play with this and see if I can find something. So give me one second. Okay, I've been flipping through my book pages. 
and I found some little scraps and I'm looking for something that has a longer picture along the side. Look at all these little birdies. Aren't they adorable? All right. So that one, that one's kind of my first choice. I just found this one and it has a nice long piece and look at that. Isn't that perfect? Okay, we're gonna use this piece. So what I'm going to do is cut this off and then glue it to this and trim it back. So let me just cut this off. So now I just got it down to the basic picture. And then what I'm going to do is glue that on to my little bookmark. And I could probably trim it back a tiny, tiny bit on the bottom. And then we'll glue that on and repunch the holes. And then I can decide what's gonna go on the back of it. And then I'll just trim that little excess piece off. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to glue this so I don't glue the holes. So this is going to come be glued here and I'm just going to go around each hole like that. I'm finding the new Fabri-Tac glues a little harder to squeeze out. They've made it so you have to poke a hole in the lid or in the nozzle to make it come out better and it just comes out so thick and gooey and this is from the store this isn't something I had shipped so I think they're getting so many orders for Fabri-Tac that they're the quality isn't as good okay so let's just make sure that that's on the edge and down all the way there we go and we'll just give it a quick roll like that. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to trim this off. See my scissors are very sticky from cutting them without an adhesive paper. So we're just going to trim it back. <laughs> I'm sorry. My scissors are very sticky. That's what I'll be doing in a minute, cleaning my scissors. Okay and now see I've already got my holes punched so now I can just repunch those holes. And then I'll do the same thing when I cover this side with whatever I cover it with. I'll just repunch those holes. Stuck. Let go. And that one. There we go. So there is one side. So this will be my bookmark. My lid on my glue, it's already hard as it is. There we go. So if I'm in January, I will open this up and slide that in. And that'll be working on right there. I'll have a little tap that says working on. And I can flip that open and that's my little bookmark. And again, I'm gonna put something on the back here, so a little saying or a quote on the back side. So I've gone ahead and done that bookmark. And then I have to decide on my cover background. I'm going to cut this board down to this size. So what is the size of this? Flower to flower. So it's about five and three quarters. So I'm going to cut this down to five and three quarters. And then that will fit on there. And again, I think I'm going to add something to the background just to give a little pizzazz there. Okay, so let me cut that. So that one will fit on there like that perfectly. And then that will go on there like that. I wonder if that other color file folder would be nice. That brown one. Let's 
let's move that guy away. Maybe this color. Get that off there. No, I think that's too brown. I think I'm going to go with some fabric. Definitely. And that will just give me the plate. That's the size that it's going to be right there. Okay, so I'm going to keep working on this. Hi, I'm back. It's late in the evening and I have some really bad shadows, but I wanted to sh show you how far I've gotten with the cover. I've used some paper bag, or this is wrapping material, some of the cream colored paper, and I'm going to put that on first. Then I'm going to take my piece that has the sticky paper on the back, and that's going to go on there. And then I've taken some more of the packing paper and the cream colored paper, and I'm going to make a little label right there. I've tried all kinds of different um, pictures and this one I keep coming back to so this is the one I'm going to stick with. I'm going to just decide to go ahead and use that so I'm going to peel the paper off and stick that on to my cover. If I can get it off. <laughs> this is a um, peel and stick adhesive that I um, received and I just want to go ahead and use it up so I think it would stick better to the faux leather than the um, glue and if I can get it started let's see if I can get it start to peeling here there we go all right, I'm just going to peel this off, and it's going to be very sticky, so I'll have to be very careful I don't stick it in the wrong spot. So, let's make sure we have the right, and it's fairly straight, and I'm going to go ahead and stick that piece down. Right. And this one's going to be a little harder to get a corner up. And then I'm going to open this up so I don't use the, get the latch in the way. And I'm going to go ahead and stick that one on. And on my straight, somewhat straight. And we'll go ahead and put this little cover on. This may take me a while to get this started. So, And there's my husband whistling away. So I'm going to do this off camera just so <laughs> I can get this on. And then I'm going to glue that one onto the front of the picture. And then I will come back and we'll start working on the inside. Okay, so it's daylight and we can have a better view of the front cover of the Filofax. I have gone ahead and stuck all that on and I have been working on my little bookmark here. I did add that strip of uh, the planner page on there and then I have this quote that I've had, um, I found it online I found it a year or two ago and I just absolutely love it and I have it in all my planners. I always print it out and put it on all my planners. Uh, so I've gone ahead and printed it out and what I use, I have a great big huge file folder and this is all end papers and insides of books. When I tear them apart, that first page or the inside cover that has um, some details on it or just that first page before you hit the title page. I have all these really old um, pages that I like to keep in this file folder. So I have lots of different um, papers in here. So I found a couple that are the ivory color and this particular piece was actually eight and a half by eleven. I had trimmed it down so it was eight and a half by eleven and I put this through my printer. I'm just going to close this here. I put it through my printer and I printed out this little poem. So I've gone ahead and put it on top of my bookmark. I distressed the edges and put it on. And then on the other side, I was going to go ahead and take another piece of, this is a little bit thicker and I've distressed the edges and I was going to glue that on there. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my little stamp, one of my favorite stamps, and I'm going to stamp down this with some brown, this is timber brown, stays on stamp pad, and I'm going to stamp some little list lines on there. And I think what I'll do is when I'm using this throughout the time, and I'll have, you know, my little thing here saying working on, um, I might add some things here that I need to remember, or some of my favorite tools, or something like that, that I can just go back and check, maybe a checklist of some of the things that I need to pull out when I'm working on a project. 
um, that type of thing. So I'm going to make this into a checklist. So I'm going to take my piece of paper and I'm going to stamp it with this stamp. And with the magic of camera, <laughs> I did it earlier and just wanted to make sure that it looks all right. I'm just going to glue that onto the back like that so that I have my poem on one side and my list page on the other. And again, this was just one of those little end pages from one of my books. This was a little thicker. The other one that I printed the poem on was thinner. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue that on. And I've been giving this a lot of thought to what I want to use this planner for. And I like to order things on uh, Amazon through Amazon.com when I'm away and Amazon.ca when I'm at home. And I also order things on Etsy and that type of thing. So when I order things and they say they're going to be shipped by such and such a time, I normally write that down on a calendar saying that I'm receiving that shipment so I can watch for it. Or if I'm away, I can at least let someone know that's um, looking after my mail that I have a shipment coming in. Um, so I think I'm going to use this for that. I had a binder that I started and I was printing off all my orders, what I ordered, and then printing those off and putting those in a binder. But I think I might try and keep track of my expenses in this. And using this calendar for when deliveries are coming in, so that's January 1st if I have a delivery coming in. Or if I maybe I post on Instagram or if I post a YouTube video, I might actually keep track of that type of thing on this. So I could put on the date that I uploaded my YouTube video um, to my YouTube channel. That type of thing. So I have it all in one place. So I kind of know what I'm doing in January and I can pre-plan for February. So that's what I'm thinking of using this for is projects I'm working on, but I can also keep some of my expenses in there and when things are coming in. So it's going to be my whole go-to um, Filofax binder type thing that I can really keep track of everything because when I start working on a project, my desktop has so many different piles on it. It just gets crazy. <laughs> so I need somewhere I can go and find my lists and know what I'm working on. So, so I've gone ahead and done that. And then, like I say, this is going to be um, writing down by the month things that are coming in or when I post it. But this will actually be some of those project pages that I showed you that I was going to take out of another book. So some of these, uh, oops, there go. So this was a from, oops, sorry, <laughs> dropping things. So this was from my larger book for keeping track of your home when you're building or things that you're doing with, within your home. It was a great big huge book and I cut it apart and I'm just going to cut some of these pages down and then punch holes in them and they will go in there. So these could be projects that I'm working on. So I'm hoping to have one of these in every single month and then and I can just add other papers in there as well but then I'm also going to have something with lines in it for and even um, a graph. I think I'll have a graph in there too so I can write out instructions if I'm working on a different kind of file folder journal or an envelope journal or I find a really cute way of making envelopes or something like that. At least I can write down you know how I did it maybe even stick one of them in here and then I can be working on another journal. Um, I like to try and keep track of how I've done things and what I've put in things so if I go back and somebody asks me to make another one or I really like something that I did in one specific journal I can go back and find it and not have to start flipping through a whole bunch of stuff so I believe that is what I'm going to do so I'm going to go ahead and start cutting up some of these pages and just start punching holes and putting these in and kind of filling up the binder now I did play with I got one of the pictures from the book and I was just playing with some of my stamps, trying to see if I wanted to collage the back. And after I stamped a couple things on there, I thought, hmm, it's getting a little busy. I didn't want it to be take away from the, the flower itself. So I think I am going to take, I used for this corner, a little receipt stamp sort of thing. So I think I am going to do something like that in the corner, but maybe bring it down. So it's just a little tiny bit in the corner. And then I have this larger stamp 
with some script writing in Paris and that type of thing. And I put that on here. And again, it's a little bit too much, so I might even just add something to that corner. So I just want something in each corner and then maybe perhaps the postcard um, stamp. I might use just the word postcard and have that somewhere or else just use one of the little postage stamps off in the corner. Like this, this rose has a lot going on. It fills up the page quite a bit. So I could have maybe the word postcard up here or a postage stamp and then just have a little tiny bit of the stamping in the corners. Um, it just really depends on the flower itself, if it's smaller or larger, but just a little bit in each corner. We'll just give it something like this one. I won't need maybe something in the corners. I could just go ahead with the, the two edges, but I think I'm going to go ahead with that. And then I noticed too that it's quite, um, you can really see the stamping. So I might try and stamp it first and then do the second stamp on the page and let it just be a little bit lighter. Um, but I kind of like the idea, I just don't want to make it quite so busy. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit as well and just stamp each page. I'm, I've got another one of these that is just little tiny plants like this. So I'm going to go ahead and just try and double stamp it, you know, stamp it on another piece of paper and then come back and do it and see if I can get it a little bit lighter. And then I will do that as well. So that's what I'm going to be working on right now is just filling in, cutting up some of the pages, filling it in, stamp these pages, come up with my title page and my little tab here that says working on. And then I'm actually going to start on this pad here as well. And I'm for the back of the pad, I'm just going to use um, some cardboard. I keep a lot of um, cardboards and stuff from backs of paper. I also got a little stack of these from these are the insides of binders. I think it was a company that was had a lot of binders, uh, maybe in an accounting place or something, and they actually cut apart, the binders were falling apart, and they cut the plastic off, and this is what's inside the binder, is this nice heavy-duty chipboard. So when I was working, um, somebody came in and donated two, three, two or three great big huge boxes of these chipboard pieces, and I grabbed them because I just started making journals again then when I was working. So I grabbed a little stack of them and brought them home and I use them a lot, but they're really thick. They're, I've got two different uh, thicknesses there, but they're nice and thick. So that would make the back, the, a nice backing to a pad that would slide down into this pocket and really hold it. Um, or I could use the back of my scrapbooking pads. That's a little bit thinner, um, but I will use that and then staple the paper to it. Or I will use my special glue that you can use to make pads by gluing the paper together, but I am going to go ahead and start on the pad as well. So I'm going to just gather up my supplies and we'll work together on some of those items. So I finished up the cover. I've added uh, the year 2020 and I've used um, just a little bit of this, it's wrapping paper that came in a package that I received in the mail. They just bundled all my stuff up and it's very, very thin. It's almost like a paper bag, but it's a little thinner. So I've gone ahead and used that in the background of this, but the background of my 2020. And again, just scraps of the paper that I use, those end papers from old books. I keep all my scraps so that until I'm finished a project because I could use them for little things like this. So I've gone ahead and done the year 2020 and I'm gonna call it my expenses and project planner. And I just have these little tiny stamps that I used for stamping out the, the words. And again, not straight. <laughs> I tried my best, but I thought, you know what? It's a junk journal and I'm happy with it. <laughs> it just looks handmade. So I've gone ahead and I finished the cover. I think that's all I'm going to do to the cover. On the inside, the bookmark that we finished up with the quote and then the piece of paper. And again, using my stamps and my stays on Timber Brown. So that's done. Um, the first one, I still have to put my uh, title in there, and again, I will probably use scraps of that paper and, f and put in there. I think I'm going to put month at a glance in there, so I'll need a little bit bigger piece of that. So that's something I'm going to work on. So I'm going to make a note here of what I want to put there. So month at a glance. So that'll go there in a little bit bigger hole. And that again is my my monthly pullout. So that's done. 
and then my January's and I have not stamped these yet. I'm gonna leave that to the end. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do that. So what I'm adding to the inside, I grabbed um, all of the those pages. It was a uh, home maintenance, you know, keeping track of when you're what you do to your home maintenance and if you build stuff or you add stuff. I think it's when you're building a home from scratch. Uh, but these were pages from the book and it's fairly, it's crisp. It's, it's not quite cardstock, but it's nice and crisp and it had these holes in it. So all I did was went through the whole book and cut different um, pages out. And this is what I ended up with. Let's just, let me show you what I ended up with here. So all I did was cut them down to size. And again, I used my template, this... Um, planner that came with a planner this piece of plastic and I used that for the holes I um, pulled out my cinch punch and the holes did not line up these are more than half the inch between so I couldn't use that so I had to draw all my um, holes on with the pencil and then punch them out with this and my hand hurts <laughs> so I got them all done so all I've done is taken the pieces anything that was blank I've got blank pages. I've got pages that have some where I can keep track of things. Um, some that just have lines and blank pages, graph, some shorter ones. So that's all I did was I went through every single page and I've just more or less kept some of the pages. Um, some of them have text on the bottom and I just cut a little strip off of an old piece that I was, you know, the piece that I cut off the bottom. So I covered the text with just another piece of paper so it's a little thicker on the bottom there. Um, and there's another one example, there was text here. So I've just added a blank piece there to cover it up. So this is to me 100% junk journaling. I'm reusing an old book that I found. Here's the text at the bottom. I haven't covered that piece. So I will. I'll take a piece of that um, scrap that I had and I'll just throw it across the bottom there. But that's the only one that has text on it. But again, I've covered them. And I'm just going to go randomly through all of these and I'm going to put them in my months. Um, there's, like I say, there's some that are plain, some that have lines, some that have graphs. I'm just going to use all of those and those are going to go in my months. I have also taken the pages that came with the uh, Filofax. Um, there was some to-do lists. There's only nine of them, I think, so I may have to photocopy one or two. And then each of these, these were just line pages and then some graph pages and there's 10 of each of these so again I may have to photocopy two but I'm just going to throw one of each in each month same with the things to do so that will go in each of them a couple of these will go in each of them and then when I was shopping at a thrift store I found this at um, the Mission Thrift Store it's actually paper it's not cardstock and it's a very um, it looks like a file folder color it's actually the same color as my file folders and it's just paper and what I did was I went on my printer and I printed out um, a page that was 11 by 14. I've got to cut them off. Great. It was 11 by 14. So it was really long. And I printed it with lines on it like that. And I printed it on both sides. And then I put it in my cutter and I cut it off at my six and a quarter inches. Now I think these are going to be a little long. I think I have to trim that little bottom piece off there um, to this size. So I just have to cut a little bit off the bottom there so that last little strip I have to cut off of each of those and then again I have to draw my circles and punch them. These were my test run. Um, um, I only put lines on one side and I punched the holes and I did cut that bottom piece off and they're going to fit in there perfectly so I'll use up these as well. So I have these line pages to go in as well and again 100% junk journaling um, using up what I had, using up my thrift store paper and my book and I'm going to go ahead and use my template and draw some holes on these and then punch some holes and then I'm going to just start inserting all the pages into the the planner and once I get them all in there I'll come back and I'll do a quick flip through and show you what I have how nice and thick it is and then again the only thing that left I have to do is um, if I'm going to stamp these go ahead and stamp these and then I'm going to work on this pad here um, and then at the back, I think this file folder, 
I think I'm going to use this for just extra papers. So anything after this will just be extras that don't fit in. Um, in the month that I need them for, I might just put one or two in each and then throw some extras in there. And then we'll work on this and I'll show you how I do the, the pad. And then I think that should be the end of it. So let me go ahead and throw all these in there and punch the holes in the paper and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, so I think I'm about finished um, with stocking up my expenses and project planner. I've added a couple of extra pieces of file folder here. I've also taken, the, taken this file folder, it's the thicker file folder, it's quite heavy, and I've taken my um, plastic template that I was using and I went ahead and drew the circles and punched the holes out and this is actually going to be my template and I think I'll stamp that saying template but that's just going to go in there and I will keep that handy. Um, I have a space here for sticking some papers in the back here. Like that. And this again will move to where whatever project I'm working on. Oops, I'm finding little holes everywhere, little dots. <laughs> and I went ahead and put on the working on tab. I did my year at a glance, which is that year there. I've gone into January and I've just put in some random pages. So there's some blank pages. Um, there's a blank one with some graph. I did the line paper, the graph paper, and the things to do list. Now I can move these around as I'm working on the month. If I want to add a few more projects in there, I'll just take some stuff out of the back. But this is basically the layout I'm going to do. So each one has some sort of a, a blank page and some of those line pages and the things to do. So I've gone ahead and filled up all of those right to the end. And then this last one here is just for some excess paper. And I've added all that lined paper that I um, printed. I put that in there. So as I'm working and I want to add more to the month, I'll go ahead and do that. So that's just my spare paper. And now I'm working on the pad in the back. I've taken a piece of that heavy file folder that I had. It's quite a heavy piece and I've cut it to um, my ruler here, five and a half. So it fits inside that slip that's up here. So five and a half and I'm gonna go with eight. So I've taken the piece of file folder and then I went through some of my old book pages and I found this Edith Holden book pages that um, are for a cooking planner, I believe and it has a lot of her pictures and stuff in it but there's a lot of these blanks so you can write recipes on them so i've taken these and i've cut them down to five inches just by taking um, the sides off i got to my five inches and then i cut the top off the word off the top and then just trimmed it up so i have my five by eight so i've got quite a few of those and I'm going to add those to my cardboard. So that's perfect. And then I've just taken a scrap of uh, that I cut off one of the sides. And I'm going to put that on the top right there. Just to cover the words so you don't see those. And then I have this very large let's move this out of the way, stapler that I found at a thrift shop. And it holds very large staples and it does up to 25 pages so I'm going to see if this will go through sorry if I jiggled and it did perfectly look at that so I'm going to go ahead and put another staple in here right about there and move that out of the way so now I have made myself a little pad and it might be a little too tall now that I've gone and put the staples in but oh, that's fine and I gotta pull my little pen holder out here there's a little pen holder I'll just stick my pencil in there so you can see it so there's my pad in the back my lined pages for adding as I go this is um this is a bucket list and maybe I'll put that in there as my bucket list for projects that I want to work on throughout the year, uh, maybe courses that I want to take from um, some of the people that I follow. So there's my bucket list and I'll put in for 2020. 
So there's my little bucket list of things. Um, I'll put a little tab here for spare paper. And then again, it's just all the little pages I put in there. Now, if I find that it starts to get a little full, I'll just take some of the months out at the back. And then as it fills up, I'll just start taking some of the projects out and staple them and, and put them in a funnel folder. But at least now I have it kind of set up for how I want it to work. I've got some of my business cards in the front here because I'll be using this on a daily basis in my office here. And then as I'm working on things, I can, if somebody, or I take it somewhere and I'm, I'm traveling somewhere and I take this with me, I can at least hand out some of my business cards as well. So that's basically my planner. It's nice and full. It has all my extras in it. It has my pad in it. And this is going to be for my expenses and my project planning. Now for my expenses, I normally have, um, even just on one of the line pages, um, I shop on Amazon and Etsy. So I will normally put, um, make a page for each of them. And again, this might be something that I put at the back in this area. But I want to try and keep track of my expenses. And once I finish January, maybe I'll take that out and put that at the back. Uh, but I'll put when I purchased it. So when I went online and I actually purchased it. And then I'll list some of the items that I've purchased or the order number. But I normally print those out, my invoices out, and, and I put them at the back of my visa. So when I pay for them, I have all the invoices attached. So I can maybe put the invoice number and just some of the items that I've purchased, the amount. And then I want to mark down when it's being delivered. And then I will have this little space sort of thing to check off that it has been delivered. So that a lot of the times when you order dyes or, or um, paste or glue or whatever you ordered, they sometimes chop it up and it comes at different times. And, and then I take that date and I actually write that in my big planner that I have, that I've made for myself. And it has the monthly calendar and everything. And I actually mark that on my monthly calendar when it's expected. If it comes before that, then I mark it when I receive it on the calendar in my planner, and then I can just come in here and check it off that I've received it. But because you get so many different little things at different times, it's nice to know what's still out there floating around, expected to be delivered. And again, I'm away um, when I go on holiday, and if I know something's supposed to come when I'm away, at least I can let people know that there's a package coming and to come to my door and I'll keep an eye on my um, emails and let you know when it's delivered so that they can come and get it because I don't want it sitting out on my front porch or in my mailbox for three weeks taking up room. So that's basically, basically my planner. Um, I just need something when I'm working on projects that I can plan. Um, if I'm putting together a journal or something, um, I can plan out the notes and the steps as I'm doing it. And then again, this can go into um, another file folder or something, but I want to be able to work on things and keep track of things as I'm making them. So that's basically my planner. If you have any questions, um, please put them in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope everyone has a wonderful winter. Um, I will be back in March. Thanks so much for watching.